Welcome, it's Peter Ballas here, cardiologist. And today what I thought I'd do is give you a little overview of anatomy. So an anatomy lesson on the heart itself. So it's important when we're looking at heart conditions and how they affect us to know a little bit about how the heart actually works. So we have our model here of the heart. So essentially the heart is a muscle that pumps and delivers oxygenated blood around our body. So uh, the heart muscle itself is contracting 70 times per minute. Now there are, I like to divide the heart into say three main aspects and obviously one being the heart muscle itself which is the pumping chamber of the heart that expels the blood. The second are the, are the arteries and these are the little pipes around the heart that actually feed oxygenated blood to the heart muscle itself because our muscles need oxygen to survive and to function properly then that's what our arteries are doing around the heart. And there are three main arteries around our heart, uh, usually two on the left, one that goes to the front of the heart, which is the major artery called the left anterior descending artery, one to the side of the heart here called the left circumflex artery that feeds the blood to the side of the heart, and then one from the right side here which goes down to the bottom part of the heart called the right coronary artery. So all these arteries supply the oxygen and blood to the heart muscle itself to keep it doing what it does. Essentially pumping to deliver nutrients and blood and oxygen to the body. And then the other part of the heart is obviously the heart valves, so inside the heart. So if we look at the heart inside, internally, the heart is made up of what we call four chambers. And these chambers, so there's one here, called the right atrium. Blood then goes into another chamber here called the right ventricle. Blood then goes into the lungs to be oxygenated. So then blood gets oxygen from our lungs, from our, our, our breathing, and gets delivered into the left atrium. On the left, it goes through one of the valves into the left ventricle. And then from the left ventricle, which is perhaps the largest chamber of our heart, the blood is ejected or expelled or pumped out through a valve, which is sort of in the background here called the aortic valve, that pumps the blood through this vessel here called the aorta. Okay, so blood comes in from our body, from our veins, and that blood is not rich in oxygen, so you know, the muscles have used up all the oxygen, and all the veins deliver the blood up through the veins up here into the right atrium, into the right ventricle, go into the lungs, get a fresh batch of oxygen delivered into the into the bloodstream, then it comes into the left side of the heart to go through this part here, the left ventricle as I said, and gets ejected out here into the vessel called the aorta. And this is the large vessel that comes off the heart, off the left ventricle. Uh, there are branches up here, and the branches that go up and deliver blood to our brain, branches that deliver blood to our upper arms and hands, but also the aorta continues down into our abdomen, into our legs, to supply blood and nutrients to, to, that, to that part of our body as well. So it's an amazing, amazing system that, uh, that is in place here for blood to be delivered to the heart with a lack of oxygen, to get pumped into the lungs, pump full of oxygen to go around our body to deliver nutrients to our vital organs. So, as I said, the heart muscle has three major components, one being the muscle itself. And when we talk about the muscle, we often tend to focus on this chamber here called the left ventricle. And here you can see this part of the muscle called the septum, and this separates the left side from the right side. And as I said, there are valves in here, then these valves essentially open and close, open and close, allowing blood to flow usually in one direction. But there are conditions that can affect the valves that unfortunately mean that the valves either become very narrowed or the valves fail to close properly. So you can imagine when a valve is not closing properly and you may have you or a loved one that has a condition affecting a valve, well you can imagine if blood's meant to go through one direction through here, if the valve isn't closing properly then the valve will typically regurgitate or leak back up again through the open valve. So Again, there are several conditions that can affect the valves as well. But that is the heart in essence. That's exactly what happens with the blood flow and delivers oxygen, blood, oxidated blood to our body.
Now, I want to focus on one aspect now, which is the coronary arteries. And these arteries come off the aorta, the bottom part of the aorta. Now, so these arteries feed blood and nutrients to the heart muscle itself. The heart muscle, as I said, all our muscles in our body require nutrients, require oxygen, and the heart is no different. The heart receives its oxygen and nutrients from the arteries here called the coronary arteries. And me being a cardiologist and one specialised in what we call interventional cardiology, while well, I'm particularly focused on how these arteries work and when problems can develop inside these arteries, essentially that's when I get called in. So when we focus on the arteries around the heart, as I said, there are typically three main arteries around the heart that feed blood and oxygen to the heart muscle. But there are problems that can build up inside these arteries and the most common condition that really causes a lot of heart problems in our community is unfortunately a process known as atherosclerosis. And that really means that plaque builds up in the arteries or cholesterol builds up in the arteries. So you can see here a relatively normal artery. If we cut the artery in a cross-sectional format, there's the artery and there's the lumen inside the artery where the blood is flowing. And it's a little bit of plaque, a little bit of plaque, and that's typically where it builds up, just outside the, uh, the lumen. But again, that can develop and there might be several risk factors that might make you more prone to building up cholesterol and you start getting something like this, which is certainly a little bit more of plaque building up in the wall of the artery. You can see what's happening here is that the artery or the, the lumen where blood is flowing is becoming slightly constricted and that itself can cause symptoms and one of the common symptoms is, is one known as angina. Now angina can be chest pain or shortness of breath that typically happens when we're exerting ourselves because when we push ourselves our heart needs to deliver more oxygen to the muscles, to our legs and, and feet and, and hands as we're, as we're walking. But equally in doing that it needs to work harder and needs to work faster. By doing that it also requires more oxygen and nutrients itself. So if there's a narrowing there that's restricting blood flow then it will tell you I'm struggling and one of the common presentations is chest pain or tightness in the chest when you're doing something that normally settles down after some rest. In some situations however cholesterol can build up to such a degree whereby we have a profound reduction in the amount of blood that's flowing in the artery. And in these cases there might be presentations such as heart attacks or where you're feeling a very acute onset of chest pain which is quite intense, quite severe. They might be radiating up into the arm, up into the jaw, into the neck. Very, very important that you seek urgent attention there. And again in that situation we often find that the artery is so narrowed that we often have to go and immediately use medications to help clear up the blockage but also perform a procedure known as an angiogram to actually take a picture of the artery itself and to see if we can actually unblock the artery by passing a stent or a little scaffold that acts as a spring to keep the artery open to restore blood flow. So that's been a summary of blood flow around the coronary arteries and some anatomy of the heart. I hope you've enjoyed this episode and I look forward to joining you again on the next one. Bye for now.